an object from another star. Right now, 3i Atlas, a system, is tearing through our solar system. Every few weeks, it shines with twice as much light, building a green cloud half a million kilometers across as it barrels toward Mars. Astronomers anticipated a flicker. Instead, 3i Atlas now glows six times brighter than predictions, confounding telescopes on Earth and sparking urgent debate over what exactly is driving this outburst. Has the nucleus become agitated, with sunlight gaining access to the alien ices? Or is it something utterly foreign? With the nearest approach to Mars only weeks away, and Earth's view about to vanish into the sun's glare, the race is on to uncover the truth before 3i Atlas breaches our reach. What's driving this unprecedented display? And what secrets lie in that bright coma right now? At the moment, Atlas is approximately to astronomical units from the Sun, that's twice the distance between Earth and our star, or roughly 300 million kilometers. Its speed is mind-boggling, nearly 60 kilometers per second and still accelerating. By the time it swings closest to the Sun at the end of October, that speed will peak near 68 kilometers per second. For comparison, that's more than twice as fast as any planet in the solar system, fast enough to cross the distance from Earth to the Moon in just over an hour. On the brightness scale, 3i Atlas has now reached magnitude 12. That may not mean much at first glance, but practically speaking, it makes the comet invisible to the naked eye. Even seasoned backyard observers need at least a medium-sized telescope and or dark skies to spot it. In fact, the distinction between magnitude 6, the threshold of a native human vision, and magnitude 12 is a difference of about 250 times in brightness. However, despite these challenges, Atlas's apparent brightness has increased much faster than any model predicted. The coma, the dust and gas cloud expanding explosively around the nucleus, now spans several hundred thousand kilometers, rivaling Jupiter's diameter. This expansion isn't just a visual spectacle, it's also the key reason why more light is being detected by telescopes than expected. As the coma grows, more sunlight is reflected and scattered, boosting the object's brightness, even as the solid core itself remains hidden. Every major survey and observatory is keeping close tabs on these numbers. The Atlas Discovery team, who first spotted the object in July, logs each new position and brightness update, refining trajectory models in real time and advising the Minor Planet Center of sudden changes. With both the Mars flyby and perihelion visible on the horizon, these hard metrics, distance, speed, brightness, set the baseline for everything that follows. In September, Atlas defied expectations with a sudden surge in brightness. The Sunshine Curve, a tool astronomers use to track how objects change from bright to dim over time, deviated significantly from predictions. This wasn't a... By early October, the window for observing 3i Atlas from Earth will be closing fast. Each evening, the comet dips lower into twilight, pressed ever closer to the sun's glare. The solar elongation, the angle separating the comet and the sun, shrinks below 30 by October 21st, the threshold at which even the largest ground-based telescopes struggle to separate the comet's faint light from the overwhelming brightness of the sky. For most of the world, the viewing window has already narrowed to a sliver of time after sunset, with the comet barely clearing the horizon before vanishing into haze. Amateur networks are scrambling to capture what few usable images remain. Online forums fill with reports of failed attempts and rare successes as observers race against encroaching twilight. Several teams are coordinating global campaigns, handing off observation duties from one longitude to the next in a relay to squeeze out every last frame before conjunction blackout. Professional observatories, too, are pushing limits, though safety protocols make them cautious about pointing sensitive optics to close to the sun. The risk of damage is real, but the urgency is greater. Once Atlas passes behind the sun from Earth's perspective, there will be a complete date of blackout. No measurements. No spectra. No way to track changes. 
Every remaining observation before October 21st is critical. When Earth loses sight, the only hope for monitoring will come from Mars orbiting spacecraft. For a brief window, Mars becomes the only outpost with a front row seat to 3I Atlas. A fleet of orbiters circling the Red Planet will attempt to direct observations. Each mission brings unique capabilities. The European Space Agency's Mars Express, with its high-resolution stereo camera and Omega spectrometer, can capture both images and chemical fingerprints from millions of kilometers away. The ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, equipped with NOMAD and ACS spectrometers, is designed to sniff out faint traces of carbon, water, and exotic volatiles spread throughout the coma. NASA's MAVEN, built to study Mars's upper atmosphere, can tune its ultraviolet spectrograph to catch emissions from cometary gas and dust, while its plasma instruments monitor how the solar wind interacts with this interstellar visitor. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, famous for its HERIZE camera, could even resolve the nucleus itself, if conditions allow. On October 3rd, 3I Atlas will sweep within about 28 million kilometers of Mars, close enough for orbiters to make a serious attempt, yet far enough to avoid the dust hazard protocols that once hampered other comet flybys. Teams have spent weeks running simulations, updating ephemerides, and fighting for observation slots. Their goals, infrared imaging to map the coma, ultraviolet spectra to measure gas production, plasma data to probe solar wind interactions, and, if fortune favors, a direct glimpse of the hidden nucleus. No single mission promises uninterrupted coverage. Constraints on spacecraft pointing, data bandwidth, and the comet's unpredictable activity mean that even a few successful observations would be a breakthrough. Direct measurements of dust, gas, and plasma at this scale have never been attempted for an interstellar object. For now, the spotlight is on Mars. Science teams are ready to seize this rare opportunity before 3I Atlas speeds onward to its rendezvous with the Sun. The first thing most observers notice is Atlas's striking green glow. Spectral analysts quickly zeroed in on this color, searching for its chemical signature, a consensus supported by ultraviolet spectra from both professional and amateur teams points to diatomic carbon C as the culprit. When sunlight excites carbon-rich molecules in the coma, they release a vivid green light, especially in the swan bands around 510 nanometers. This is a classic sign of cometary activity, but Atlas is notable for the sheer intensity of its green hue, even from two astronomical units away. The specifics are agreed upon by all. Some teams have indicated potential contributions from carbon that is, ionized carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, or the cyanide CN radical especially in the earliest September spectra. Additionally, they can glow green or blue under ultraviolet sunlight, and debates have broken out in peer review threads about calibration scripts and the handling of background subtraction. Nevertheless, the strongest datasets, those with the widest and cleanest spectral coverage, consistently show that the visible spectrum is dominated by C emission. The chemistry here is more than just a visual feature. The rapid speed of 3I Atlas means that fresh ices are being slammed with radiation and dust at an accelerated rate, peeling and mixing volatile molecules together to form a coma. Consequently, the green color isn't just a marker for carbon, it's a real-time indicator of how the surface of the comet is changing rapidly as it races toward the sun. A growing number of observers have begun to notice something strange about 3I, Atlas, a dim sunward feature stretching back toward the sun as a whole. This goes against most people's expectations of a comet, where typically dust is swept away from the sun by radiation pressure, forming a classic tail that points outward. For 3I, Atlas, however, the geometry and the physics are conspiring to change the outcome when a comet races through the inner solar system at extreme speeds. Dust grains ejected from the nucleus actually have the ability to advance along the path taken by the comet, especially if large or electrically charged. From Earth's perspective, these particles can create the appearance of a small upward anti-tail, visible only when the viewing angle lines up just right. 
Plasma physicists point out that the rapid expansion of the coma combined with the comet's high velocity results in a complicated environment where electromagnetic forces rival gravity. Charged dust grains caught between the solar wind and the comet's own outflow can be funneled into narrow streams. These sunward-facing aspects aren't permanent, they depend on the interplay of grain size, charge, and the ever-changing direction of sunlight. The effect is amplified by the unique observing geometry at the end of September when Earth is almost in the plane of Atlas's dust sheet. Rumors of a sunward anti-tail on 3i, Atlas remain tentative. Amateurs and some professional teams have flagged hints, but no peer-reviewed images or precise measurements have been published. The phenomenon itself isn't new to the study of comets, but its appearance at interstellar speeds is unusual. At the moment, the anti-tail adds another layer of intrigue to an already uncertain visitor, hinting at the intricate physics of dust and plasma at play as three I atlas barrels toward the sun. Every comet that visits our solar system brings its own quirks. 3i, Atlas, however, stands out even among rare company. The first to interstellar visitors, i.e. Borisov and Aumuamua, were very different. In 2017, Aumuamua was discovered, a dry, cigar-shaped object with no tail and no visible coma slipping through the inner solar system almost unnoticed. Two years later, Twi, Borisov arrived with all the hallmarks of a typical comet, a bright coma with a blue tint, a dust trail, and a chemical signature dominated by water and cyanide. 3i. Atlas does not neatly fit into either category. Not only is its coma extensive, but it is also atypically green, the result of strong carbon emissions not usually seen at such intensity in solar system comets. Its brightness surged nearly six-fold above predictions and effect with no parallel in either Aumuamua's muted passage or Borisov's steady rise. And while Borisov's tail moved away from the sun as expected, Atlas hints at a sunward anti-tail, a feature more familiar from the rarest solar system comets but nearly unheard of in interstellar objects, even among recent newcomers like C. 2025 are to Swan and C. 2026 Lemon, which displayed bursts of activity, 3i, Atlas is in a class of its own. Its speed, chemistry, and unpredictable behavior force astronomers to reconsider the limits between comets formed locally and those forged in distant planetary systems. For classification teams, the challenge is more than simply putting a label on it. Each anomaly in 3i, Atlas's profile is a glimpse into the physical processes that may have shaped small bodies across the galaxy. The stakes are high, every fresh measurement has the potential to overturn decades of assumptions about what it means to be a comet and the stories these visitors can tell about the worlds they left behind. After perihelion, 3i, Atlas will begin to fade, likely faster than it brightened. Most models predict a sharp drop in apparent magnitude as it moves away from the sun, its coma shrinking and dispersing into the dark. For anyone hoping to catch a glimpse, the requirements will become steeper. A telescope with a mirror of at least 20 centimeters becomes the bare minimum, and even then, only highly sensitive digital cameras will capture more than a faint smudge. Visual observers will be outpaced by the comet's rapid retreat, Image stacking and careful background subtraction will be essential for tracking lingering activity. Increasingly, comet watching will shift to online dashboards and coordinated programs. Social science networks often hosted on Discord servers or platforms run by established organizations already provide near real-time updates on the comet's position, morphology, and brightness. These platforms collect raw telescope data from backyards around the globe, process it, and share light curves that anyone can follow. For many, this is the first time an interstellar object's fate is being chronicled by amateurs in almost real time. The science doesn't fade away. Each new light curve, disputed detection, and spectrum feeds into a bigger puzzle. How do interstellar comets behave as they pass through an entirely new solar system? What can their chemistry, dust, and fading light teach us about the building blocks that shaped planets across the galaxy? 
These inquiries now extend beyond the observing field, inviting anyone with a telescope, a laptop, or even just curiosity to join the search for answers as 3i Atlas slips back into the dark. Earth-based perspectives will diminish after October 21st due to superior conjunction. The Mars flyby on October 3rd will provide the last opportunity for close-range, multi-instrument observations. No specific Mars orbiter schedules have been released, leaving gaps in upcoming data. In contrast to Oumuamua and to I, Borisov, 3 I, Atlas displays a mix of comet-like and atypical features. What happens as it rounds the sun its composition, fade rate, and structural behavior will inform future research on interstellar visitors. For now, the true nature of 3i Atlas remains a mystery, awaiting hard-hitting scientific inquiry and the conclusion of its encounter.